What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Makai back in the building. You feel me? Now, today we have another Larry Bird video. But hold on now. We're going to stick on this Larry Bird train. But I want to implement Michael Jordan to this because some of y'all was going kind of crazy in the comment section talking about Larry Bird is still the greatest player of all time. Here is my opinion on it. I believe that great, that Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time. He's in my top 10 list. And as y'all said, well, if I keep watching Larry Bird stories, he will go up. Now, I'm coming at it with an open mind, but here's the reason why I'm saying that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. When you compare Larry Bird and Michael Jordan's prime, I, that's how I like to compare. That's what I like to look. How are you at your best? At your peak. Michael Jordan's peak was way higher than Larry Bird's peak. For a man to win two three-peats, two three-peats in a 10-year span, because y'all said that Larry Bird ran the NBA in the 80s, right? He was the best player in the 80s, right? To run the league for a 10-year span, Michael Jordan... Gave y'all two three-peats, right? He gave y'all two three-peats. So that's six championships, five regular season MVPs, 10 scoring titles. Now, hold on. Some of the scoring titles were in the 90s, some of was in the 80s. So I get that to you, right? Then on top of that, top of that, he had, let's see, incredible numbers. I think he averaged 40 in the finals at a certain point. He never allowed it to a game seven. He's never lost in the finals either. And we gotta implement that as well. And the numbers don't even lie, bro. We can pick any year. We can pick any year and we can compare them to Larry Bird. We can do that for the next video. I might have to do that for the next video. But in my opinion, Jordan's peak was higher than Larry Bird's peak. That's not saying, and I'm not knocking Larry Bird for that though. There's nothing wrong with that. Larry Bird's peak was up there, bro. Like, as a player, as a player set, he was a better player than Magic Johnson. But Magic Johnson's legacy was better than Larry Bird because Magic Johnson won more. You see what I'm saying? As a player, he's one of the greatest players of all time. But I'm just saying, at his peak, Michael Jordan is better. This video is going to talk about the best Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan story ever told. It was recommended in the comment section by, uh, I'll put your I'll put your comment right here on uh, whoever recommended. I appreciate that. And then uh, we're going to get to it. Let's get to it. NBA Hall of Famer James Worthy, who played against both Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, said, I'd much rather play against Michael Jordan than Larry Bird. Jordan made you look slow, but Bird made you look stupid. Look. I've been hearing a lot of that in the comment section. So um, I, I, re I believe that James Worthy said that. And on top of that, James Worthy is one of Michael Jordan's closest friends because James Worthy actually played with Michael Jordan in college and UNC. So I knew about that. I knew their relationship was pretty close. So um, And on top of that, Michael Jordan's favorite teammate, other than Scottie Pippen was James Worthy. He would have definitely wanted him on his on his GOAT squad. I'm not here to convince you that Larry Bird is better than Michael Jordan. I'll just present to you the facts and let the NBA legends who actually played against both of them tell you what they think. People always ask me who's the hardest player I've ever had to guard. And there was Michael Jordan, George Gervin, the late great Mike Mitchell. I mean, so many players. I always say Larry Bird, and I say this for the reason because when Michael passed the basketball, he kind of hung on his shorts and he sit off to the side. With Larry, when he passed the basketball is when he became more dangerous. He mm -hmm. was either setting a pick, coming off a pick, catching right. the ball, passing the ball. So he was the one you always had to stay attentive to mm -hmm. the whole 24 seconds of that offensive play for the Celtics. And you know what? Oh, he's going to get an offensive rebound. He was going to do something to help his team uh, have the best chance of scoring at that point. So I always say as him, he didn't need the basketball. Um, Did MJ, as his career progressed, Michael Jordan played off ball. He played off ball. He came around screens, shot a uh, midi off the screen. 
Then he'll he'll get the switch off of the screen, get in the post, get into his ISO, get into his shot. I mean, that's the same thing, right? I mean, I see what y'all are saying. Like Larry Bird was constantly moving around, but Michael Jordan was too, bro. Don't 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 get it twisted, bro. Michael Jordan was too, bro. To affect the game. To the untrained eye, Michael Jordan was light years better than Larry Bird simply because his scoring numbers were better. But in actuality, it was much closer than that because Bird affected the game in so many ways. I mean, I, I agree to that. I agree to that. Larry Bird did affect the game in so many other ways other than scoring, getting others involved, getting everybody involved, getting players open, um, especially in the transition. I see a lot of transition plays for Larry Bird. But Michael Jordan... Like I'm, I'm, I'm not getting it because Michael Jordan, a lot of his steals, like I'm really, I'm really like set on what he said between like off the ball, like he, he hung on his shoulders, bro. Like he didn't do that, bro. And and, and on the defensive end, he was nice, bro. He was so nice at sneaking behind you and making you think that he's lazy and he's not really doing anything, and he'll come in. Bam, uh, swipe the ball, strip you. He'll block you from behind. Or he'll go straight on and block you, like, or he'll get you a chase down block. Like Jordan did that too, bro. He wasn't, he wasn't no lazy player, bro. Don't, don't get it twisted, bro. I saw Larry Bird one night in Phoenix. They were losing big time at the half, and they come out in the third quarter, and Larry did not take a shot, but dominated the game. He had seven assists in the third quarter, and they came back and won the game. He could affect the game without taking a shot. Who else can you say that about to that degree? Nobody. Michael could never do that. Never. Michael had to have the ball. Here's a 1986 magazine on the NBA. And remember, this is a league with Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Charles Barkley, Isaiah Thomas, Hakeem Olajuwon, Moses Malone, and Dr. J. And in a league with all... Okay, so let me let me go back to see what he just said. Hold on. I'm about to go back. As nearly perfect as you can get. Maybe the best player of all time. Okay. So he's saying that this was in a league. So what the, what remember, year was this? This is March 3rd, 1986. 1986? Okay, hold on. This is a league with Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Charles Barkley, Isaiah Thomas, Hakeem Olajuwon, Moses Malone, and Dr. J. Okay. 1986, 1986, and he's talking about all these eight players. Now, Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan got drafted in 84. This was in March. So as they were saying this about Larry Bird, I believe Michael Jordan was fighting to come back from his injury. Am I wrong? This is before the 63-point game and all that, right? Kareem, I don't know too much, and Isaiah Thomas, I don't know too much. Moses Malone, I know he definitely was established as a player. Magic Johnson was definitely established as a player along with Kareem and Isaiah Thomas. Charles Barkley. Let's let's do some, let's do some research right quick. I want to do some research right quick. We're gonna go. Let's go to Google right quick. What year was Charles Barkley drafted? He was drafted in 1984. 1984. This video, not this video. Yeah, in this video, he's saying 1986. This is what people were saying about Larry Bird with a Michael Jordan that was coming in the second season, Charles Barkley coming in the second season, Hakeem Olajuwon coming in the second season, and Julius Irving. So, bro, that's their second season, bro. Of course they're not going to like say that these players are the greatest players of all time in their second season who who's doing that you see what i'm saying so the only players that we can really realistically talk about was magic johnson kareem isaiah thomas uh moses and moses malone and um julius Irving. because that's not fair bro that's not you can't do that bro i don't even i, I don't even know the legendary numbers that some of these players had in 1986 because I know definitely 1986, Michael Jordan broke his foot. So he barely played in the second season. I don't know, man. And in the league with all of these all-time great players, everyone agreed.
that Larry Bird was the best because in 1984, 1985, and 1986, Larry Bird won MVP back to back to back. And in the 1986 playoffs, Larry Bird finally faced Michael Jordan head to head. And in game one, Michael dropped a spectacular 49 points. But Larry Bird had an all around game with 30 points, eight assists, six rebounds, and three steals to lead the Celtics to a victory. By game two, MJ had a revelation. And this is game two of the best of five. And so this is what I was talking about. A lot of guys was getting at me in the comments talking about what I said when him having a stacked team and that um how Larry Bird took a, a trash team when he first came in. It was like 25 wins. It took him to like 61 wins in the first season, like his rookie season. Bro, let me explain something to you guys. Let me explain something to you guys. I was ex I was talking about this, eight, 1986. 1986. Let, let's see if they let's see if they do the lineups. Let's look at the lineups. Five first round action, and the Celtics will try to make it two in a row over the Bulls. Yeah, we really have to play a complete basketball game. I, I don't think one man can beat the Boston Celtics. I don't think one man can beat the Boston Celtics. But he sure did try. He tried. They didn't even they didn't even show the lineups, bro. They didn't even show the lineups, bro. And that's that's what kind of gets me, bro. That's what kind of let's just listen to what he got to say, bro because Jordan turned on God mode and broke the record for the most points ever scored in a playoff game. Lead in the first half of the game against the Celtics Thursday. Jordan trying to fake Bird, can't do it. Hits the jumper, but I think Bird played pretty well defensively against Jordan. I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, with uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time. Look at all of those players that he just said, bro. And who did Michael Jordan have? Charles Oakley? Bro, come on, dog. Come on, man. Come on, man. And you gonna sit up here and compare this Jordan to Larry Bird, bro? And you gonna sit up here and knock Jordan because of his team? Look at who Larry Bird had. He had Hall of Famers on the squad at this point. Michael Jordan had zero Hall of Famers at that time, bro. Zero. You, you can't do that, bro. But he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. Jordan hits it, 56 for Jordan, and that ties the Chicago Bulls all-time leader. Jordan with eight on the clock. Jordan oh. ties the game. Oh, boy. 63 points, and you're looking at an all-time record. Oh. Bro, and I've watched this game so many times, bro. I've watched this game so many times. Like, not I, I obviously I didn't watch it live because I'm 20, bro. But what I'm saying is I've watched this on YouTube so many times, bro. Everything that you're seeing, bro, is straight tough. Michael Jordan, everything he was doing was tough, bro. I promise you, bro. Look. Michael Jordan. But it was an incredible, incredible Almost had a playoff double. performance. I've never seen it before, and I had never seen it after. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. But Larry Bird left with the most important statistic of all, the W. Ten on the clock. Bird, pick and roll, Paris. That's what I'm talking about, bro. This is literally what I'm talking about. LeBron fans, if y'all gonna sit up here and talk about and give LeBron excuses for all of his losses, then we can give Michael Jordan an excuse for losing because he had nobody, bro. He had nobody. Victory for the Boston Celtics. And what's, bro, what's so crazy about this game, MJ almost won this game. I, th I think, I think. I don't know what the score was. Take a two to nothing lead over Chicago in their best of five. Michael Jordan didn't beat Larry Bird. You show Michael Jordan going between his legs one time in the highlights, you know, against Larry Bird. And that was the game he got 63. That's when he dropped 63 on Bird. Yes. yes. But That's if memory serves me correct, they got he lost. swept. No, not, not lost. They got yes. swept. Okay. <laughs> He, so do you. Even though he dropped 63, we stepped all in his ass, did we not? <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Larry Bird went on to win his third championship that year. And the following year, when Larry faced MJ in the playoffs, it happened again. 
the side. Larry Bird against Banks. Rubs him around a Perry screen. Drives it down the lane and lays it in with a right hand. Michael Jordan with 30 points in this game. So he was 30 or better in all three playoff games. Bird's got 31 in the game and 14 in the fourth quarter. Bullseye. Boston has kept it in good hands in the fourth quarter. It's been Bird and that's about it. Final score in Chicago Stadium. The Boston Celtics sweep the Bulls out 105 to 94. Too much Celtic talent, too much Celtic experience for a Bulls team lacking in both areas. Yes, Larry Bird in back to back years swept Michael Jordan in the playoffs. So if Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time, but Michael Jordan never beat Larry Bird then what does that make Larry Bird? Now, to be fair, at that point, Michael Jordan didn't have his best teammate ever, Scottie Pippen yet. When Scottie Pippen arrived, the battles were closer and more intense. And later in the video, I'll let you see exactly what happened when Larry Bird faced a prime Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Because Larry Bird did something so miraculously impressive no other man in the history of basketball can say they've done. But after Bird swept Jordan back-to-back -back years in the playoffs, that very next year in 1988, Michael Jordan had statistically the best season ever. Where he won the scoring title at 35 points per game, the steals title, the MVP, the defensive player of the year, the all-star game MVP, and the dunk contest. He faced Larry Bird four times that year. And this is how it went. Game one. Tough battle. Bird wins. Game two. MJ has a historic 50 point game. To win by 10. Game three. Larry's revenge. After that previous loss. I'm sure Larry Bird had that rematch circled on his calendar because he ended up with 33, eight and seven and blew MJ out by 30 points. Game four, MJ had an impressive performance with 39 points and eight assists, but Larry Legend had 44 points and 10 rebounds, but most importantly, a win versus Michael Jordan in his statistically best season ever. And though Michael Jordan didn't face Bird again that year in the playoffs, Jordan did face Isaiah Thomas in the Detroit Pistons. And I'll let Isaiah Thomas tell you exactly how he recalls that year and the rest of the 80s. So Michael Jordan in the 80s, the best year that he had was he was the MVP of the league and the defensive player of the year, I believe that was in 88. Yes. We beat, them four, we beat them four to one. I'm going to say that again. Four to one. They won one May game. I respond. And he never beat Larry Bird. He never beat Magic and Kareem. He never won. And all I'm saying is in the 80s, what I remember in the 80s, it was Philadelphia mm -hmm. with Dr. J, Magic, yep. Kareem, Bert, Michael Jordan, he he was a non-factor a non-factor is this your goat but after isaiah thomas swept mj he did go on to beat larry bird in six games and many people touted the detroit defense for holding larry bird to under 20 points per game but what many don't include in that story is that larry bird was noticeably injured with painful bone spurs in both feet. So only because of injuries, for the first time in five seasons, Larry Bird would not make the NBA Finals. Starting the following year, Larry Bird had season-ending surgery on both feet after playing only six games. But sadly, it only got worse. Because that following offseason, Larry Bird broke his back and was never the same again but even as Larry Bird's entire body betrayed him for some reason 
he always played well against Michael Jordan. Almost like he had a personal vendetta against Jordan. And I think I know why. When Michael Jordan was in college, he actually played an exhibition game against Larry Bird. Jordan and a bunch of college players, while preparing for the 1984 Olympics, faced Larry Bird and a bunch of NBA stars. The goal was to toughen the college kids up before they headed to the Olympics. So during pre-game warm-ups, when Jordan chased the loose ball to the other end of the court, Larry Bird picked the ball up. But instead of handing it to Jordan, Bird kicked the ball over Jordan's head to the opposite end of the court. And I guess you could say, Michael Jordan took that personally. Now look at my, really? Oh, so that's how you gonna play. You gonna do this stuff in front. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. Michael Jordan dominated that game. A young Michael Jordan actually carried a team full of college players past a prime Larry Bird and a bunch of NBA players. Michael Jordan won the battle, but Larry Bird won the war. I think Larry Bird took that loss personally because Jordan never really got the best of Larry Bird ever again. When Larry Bird finally returned to the court after missing basically an entire season with foot surgery and a back injury, he faced prime Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in a regular season game. The teams went back and forth. Bagley against Paxson, 10 on the shot clock. Jordan on Bird. Quick feed into Jim Paxson for the layup. Larry Bird is KO the read. Jordan oh! steal. Scotty Pippen ahead to Jordan. Michael for the gun. Bird against Pippen. Bird working on Pippen one on one. Hits the fadeaway. And with 10 seconds to go, it was a tie game. The Celtics had the ball. And the Bulls put their two best defenders. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen both on Larry Bird because everyone knows who the ball is going to. And then this happened. Let's see if they wind it all the way down. Inside Bird of low, 10 Bird seconds. low. You can't double yet. Now you can quickly. Bird's jumper. Good. 3.6 seconds left. Larry Bird gives the Boston Celtics a two point lead. Everybody in this building had to know it was going to. Michael came over to help That's out. Right. Celtics lead with 3.6 seconds here, 102 to 100. A game-winning shot while being double-teamed by both Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, two of the best defenders of all time. Somehow, the word clutch doesn't even begin to describe the greatness of Larry Bird when the game was on the line. But maybe a quote from NBA Hall of Fame coach, executive, and former player Pat Riley can explain. In an interview, when comparing Larry Bird and Michael Jordan's clutchness, Pat Riley said this iconic quote, If I had to choose a player to take a shot to save a game, I'd choose Michael Jordan. If I had to choose a player to take a shot to save my life, I'd take Larry Bird. As Larry Bird was on his last legs and Michael Jordan was starting his dynasty in 1991, Larry Bird mustered up enough strength to battle MJ again in one of the last great duels between the two. Gamble came up with a steal. Here's Bird. Yes. He was met on a switch by Jordan and there. 69, Chicago 67. Jordan eluding a triple team. This battle between two all-time greats came down to the wire. In overtime, it was a tie game with 0.4 seconds on the clock and the Chicago Bulls had the ball. Pippen, now a look to throw in. Four tenths of a second. And here it is, Jordan with the play. Yes! But it's way to go. Will not count. Mike Mathis said no. Did not beat the clock. Ooh, he almost had it. 
after Jordan's possible game winner was waved off? I think I think um, after this they went into investigation into this shot, and I think they like changed because they said I think because Phil Jackson actually like had the NBA go into investigation after the shot, I believe. Larry Bird on four straight possessions in double overtime did this. Jordan. It's great to hear all these coaches talk about they're really concerned as Bird hits a little fade away. They're really concerned about the minutes building up. They want to be fresh going into the playoffs until Over the game. time number two. Bird. Yes. Larry Bird hitting it out. Ready to go. And the second overtime. The same thing every time, bro. Bird with the fake through the foul. Bro, get a switch, bro. Where's Scotty, bro? Switch off. You got Horace Grant on Larry Bird, bro. Knowing that he's going to get him on the ISO every single time. They get him down in the post, and then they tell everybody to get out the way and just let him let him just cook Horace Grant. And they didn't even switch the game plan up or not. And hits! Oh, wow. 45 to go in the second Look, overtime. He's doing it again. Bird Another fires. ISO in the first game. Yeah. The crowd couldn't help but chant the name of the greatest player of all time. Shook his head and said, this guy's too much. And the chant of Larry, Larry. Steve Brown beat John Paxson off the pitch. And the second overtime, and that will do it. The Celtics held on to win that game, but that year, Michael Jordan won his first championship versus Magic Johnson in the finals, and his dynasty had officially begun. Larry and I were talking, and Michael walks in, and he says, it's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> And we both hit each other like, well, he's not lying. <laughs> Larry Bird retired after that next season, but not before he took the court with Michael Jordan one last time. Except this time, it would be on the same team in what many would call the greatest team ever assembled. I'm so glad he's the 1992 himself. Dream Team. By Jordan. Perez may have realized that's, that may be his best opportunity to get an open look in transition. Magic with the pass that misfired. Jordan with the behind the back save. Here's Bird. Yes. And you just knew that Larry Bird was not going to miss that shot after the great save by Michael Jordan. Larry, I hate that you retired. Thank goodness. I'm glad. I'm tired of seeing your face. Well, a lot of sad memories to me, but. You know, I enjoyed you tremendously. I wish you a lot of luck. And I think you had a very wonderful career, even though you probably ruined a lot of my uh, successful games against the Boston Celtics. And I see you somewhere along the road, somewhere playing golf. Even though he dropped 63, we stepped all in his ass, did we not? Uh, <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> okay, look, man. All right. Okay. 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 So I've seen that Jordan has gotten the best out of Larry Bird for a lot of games. A lot of these games that he talked about was in his earlier career, um, where Larry Bird was stomping on MJ, even though MJ had some legendary numbers, but the reason why nobody talks about it is because it was overshadowed by Larry Bird. So Larry Bird, and he, and he got the W, he got the win and everything, right? And then he brought an example about how um, MJ, and Scottie Pippen were on the same team where his uh, dynasty had just started. So this was probably like, what, 1990? It was 1990, 1991? And Larry Bird did his thing. I just think that that, that game was a little controversial because uh, they actually went into investigation about that shot. And it was a whole, it was a whole thing about a lot of But... Larry Bird's going up on my list. He's climbing. He's climbing up on my list. Pretty soon I will do uh, 
a greatest of all time list. But Larry Bird's going up. He's going up. He's going up. I'm just not going to tell y'all where. But uh, let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man. Uh, this was a pretty long video. So um, I appreciate, appreciate you guys if you guys watch this entire video. Bro. I appreciate it, man. Um, there's going to be more videos to come, of course. We're going to stick to this Larry Bird joint. And we're going to go to other legends as we keep going. Uh, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And then uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.